let's talk about switching game engines. This is difficult to discuss because everybody is doing their own thing, which is how life is. Nobody is wrong, it's just that we all have different priorities. I think you should switch engines quite a bit. I think that if you see an engine that looks interesting, you should use it. But other people are on the opposite side and think you should use the engine that actually lets you get stuff done. Neither of those is wrong, it's just our approach to how we do things. That said, it is useful to understand what switching engines entails and what different engines can do for you. So let's discuss that a little bit. When I was a young lad riding my Brontosaurus to school, uh, we already had game engines. We've had game engines since we've had games. And I cut my teeth on the Apple II Pinball Construction Toolkit, which was a fantastic game engine for creating massively multiplayer RPGs. Obviously, it was pinball games. And that's how it always was. Whatever toolkit you used, whatever game engine you used, it was hyper-focused on producing one specific kind of game. If you wanted to make a, you know, an adventure game, you get the adventure game toolkit and you hit the ground running. The toolkit is specifically engineered to make that one kind of game. All you have to do is plug in the art and the writing. It got a little bit more difficult as time went on, though, because art got more difficult. Back at the very beginning, everything was text adventures, and I could make Zork, because I can write. But then you got the text adventures with added graphics, and then you got the ones that were all graphics and very little text, and then so on and so on and so on. I can't make Maniac Mansion because I only write. I don't do pixel art. Oh, well, I learned how to do pixel art, except for now all of the adventure games are in 3D. It's difficult to keep up with the rising cost of producing assets. And as indie devs, you might think, well, who cares, right? You can just use things that are a, cent a, de you know, a decade of date or whatever. But there's this pressure to make your games not suck. And that means that for a lot of indie devs, there's a pressure to try and produce the best assets they can. Graphics and animations and sound and all of that stuff. We want our stuff to look good. And it gets more and more expensive. In fact, at some point, it became so expensive that Game Engine started to mean something very different. We got these general purpose game engines, like Unity. This is by far not the first. Uh, I played with Torque before Unity. Heck, even Flash is a general game engine. The point of these game engines was not to help you make a particular kind of game, but to help you wrangle your assets. The weight of assets had become so heavy and the formats so standardized that the game engines were more useful as a way to wrangle assets than as a way to actually make the architecture of a game flow. And that's more or less where we are today. Unity's main job is not to help you make games, it's to help you wrangle assets. You can put anything you want into Unity and get it to render pretty pretty easily. It's in a scene now, and it's working. Is it from Blender? That's fine. From Maya? That's fine. From Mixamo? That's fine. Uh, from, uh, you know, just a sound effect from a game you stole it from somewhere. Here's an animation. Here's some mocap. Here's a shader. Here's some post-processing. Throw it in. Probably can get it to work within a couple of minutes. Even a child can figure out how to put assets into Unity and then put them into a level. The same is true of every generalized game engine. Their main job is to help you wrangle your assets, not to help you make a game. Unfortunately, that means that once your assets are starting to get wrangled, you're responsible for all of that game architecture bullshit. And that's not as easy as it first appears. Let's say you're making an RPG. Did you know that you have to make a database full of enemy types? That might not be the first thing you think of when you think of how to make an RPG, but it's more or less required. Trying to make an RPG without a database of enemy types is going to be tough. But in Unity, there is no here's a database of enemy types thing. It just doesn't exist because they don't, they don't care to make RPGs. They're not trying to help you make any kind of game. So you've got to come up with the architecture for that. Same with any other game. Now you can go out to the marketplace and you can get your RPG toolkit. And then you can bring that toolkit back into Unity, and it'll have all of the structure you need to make your RPG, at least in part, 
And guess what? This is what we used to call the game engine. This is our adventure game toolkit. Unity is just a backbone. Something for you to render your stuff with, something to wrangle your assets with. The actual structure of the game doesn't come from Unity, it comes from whatever you got from the asset store or whatever you build yourself. Now the reason why if you switch away from Unity you can find a dozen other open source game engines that look exactly like Unity is because all of them exist solely to just wrangle your assets. All of them use the same basic structure as Unity. You can put assets in, you can put them in a scene, you can keep track of them. Congratulations, you now have what we call a game engine today. But then they leave you hanging high and dry, just like Unity does. These game engines don't help you create the architecture of your game. This is not ideal if you are a hobbyist trying to make a game, which is why when someone asks me what game engine they should use, I almost never respond with an actual suggestion. I usually ask them what kind of game they're making. Because if you're making an RPG, you should use an RPG toolkit of some kind. If you're making an adventure game, you should use an adventure game toolkit. The architecture of a game can be quite difficult, and you don't have an instruction manual on how the architecture of a specific genre should work. So it makes more sense for you to start with something that can help you get your footing. And then later on, you can switch over to something more general, like Unity, if you want the better graphics. Because that's really what these engines are about. That's really what's going on here. These general purpose engines, like Unreal, like Unity, their main goal is to make sure that your stuff looks as good as possible. They help you wrangle your assets. And that's pretty much it. One of the things that happens here is that we learn how to develop the architecture we need for our games in a given engine. And it can feel like that means that that architecture is stuck in that engine. If we learn how to make a database of enemy types in Unreal, and then we try and change over into Godot, we might feel like we have to completely reinvent how to make a database of enemy types. But the truth is, we just have to figure out the syntactic sugar in Godot as opposed to in Unreal. Every game engine can handle a database of enemy types because every game engine has access to code of some kind. We can always make a spreadsheet of enemies. But it can feel like it's linked to Unreal in our head. We can feel like we're stuck in Unreal or in Unity or wherever we learn to do it because that's where we learn to do it. And this is made so much worse if you bought a third-party product that can only be used in that game engine and you're relying on it for part of your architecture. So when we're talking about switching between different game engines, what we're normally talking about is switching between different multi-purpose game engines. Different engines who, th that are entirely focused on helping you wrangle your assets. And the truth is all of those engines are pretty much identical in terms of wrangling assets. Obviously some of them are just non-functional, but if they work, they all work in more or less the same way. They even have almost identical interfaces. You can learn those things in just a couple of days at most. There are going to be differences. For example, if you're using Unity and you switch to Unreal, how do you parent objects in a scene and what does it do? It might look the same, but it doesn't do the same thing. These two have very different ideas about how object parenting works. And that's the reason that I bounced off of Unreal a couple of times, because I was just trying to treat Unreal like Unity and refusing to learn how Unreal actually does things, and so it felt like an insurmountable hurdle. Except when I actually decided that Unity had gone far enough that I wasn't going to use it anymore, it only took me about a day to learn how it actually works in Unreal. And I think you'll find that it's the same with you. We get used to our game engines, and then we switch, and we're overwhelmed by the fact that it's different, but it's really not that different. It's only different in terms of the syntactic sugar, in terms of the way specific things unfold. But it's got the same fundamental bones. It does the same things, and it fails to do the same things in all cases. Switching from Unreal to Unity, or from Unity to Godot, or from Godot to Unreal, or any other combination, 
it's not hard to get the fundamentals up and running. It's not hard to learn how those things work. Not everything is exactly compatible. You probably won't be able to adapt a project that you're currently doing very easily. And if you're using a piece of middleware that you desperately need, it can be extremely difficult to switch game engines unless they also are on that game engine, which happens more often than you might think. But fundamentally, all of these general purpose game engines exist to help you wrangle your assets and then provide no additional assistance on the architecture of your game. Once you've learned how to make that architecture, you can make it in any game engine. You can even make it without a game engine. And to me, that's the important part, knowing that architecture, knowing how these things work, not which game engine has the best syntax or whatever. So when you're thinking about switching game engines and wondering which game engine to switch to, my advice is to switch to all of them. If you're thinking about switching, you've already made the choice to switch. You just haven't settled yet. And maybe it'll take you two years to switch because that's what it took me to switch. But at some point, you're, you're already dissatisfied with where you are. You're already looking for a new engine. Go ahead and look for another new engine. Go ahead and look for something that suits you. Try a couple of different ones. If it's a general purpose engine, they're probably going to be basically interchangeable. But if it's something like an RPG maker or a visual novel thing, that's when you can really get a lot of help from your engines. Those engines provide so much extra guidance in the form of structure that actually makes the game work. You don't have to figure out what to do to make the game work. It's built right in. That's why those engines are so nice. And that's why I usually recommend that you try and start with an engine that is specifically engineered for your subgenre. Even if it's old, even if it's out of date, even if it's considered hokey, it will teach you the architecture that you're going to need. And then you can implement that architecture in another game engine later on if you decide to switch. On the other hand, if your focus is on graphics and on having the best looking game you can have, well, then you're going to need a general purpose game engine because that's literally their specialty. And in that case, I probably recommend Unreal for the simple fact that it is the best at that. And that's it. Have a good night.